The left is celebrating their favorite old socialist Bernie Sanders because he supposedly forced Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos to raise the minimum wage at Amazon for all employees to $15 per hour. A win for Bernie and a win for the working class, right? No, it's a lot deeper than that, kids. John Doyle in. Good day there, mams and sirs. Welcome, as always, to Hack Off Commie. If this is your first time here, please subscribe. We are thrilled to have you. And if this isn't your first time here and you still haven't subscribed, I'm honestly a bit hurt. So, this summer, Amazon founder and CEO Jeff Bezos was in the eye of the news cycle because he had surpassed Microsoft founder Bill Gates in total net worth, becoming the richest man in the world. Of course, instead of being happy for Mr. Bezos, people immediately used this to spark the income inequality argument, which at its core is an argument rooted in jealousy since everyone in America and everyone in the world too actually has been getting much richer by the year. Shout out to the free market. But the left is scornful because they aren't getting rich as fast as the guy who established a company that is now worth about a trillion dollars and can ship you a couch in two days. So Bernie Sanders, of course, the self-proclaimed democratic socialist, terrible impression, but nonetheless, he decided he would use this as an opportunity to complain about rich people despite, you know, not having too shabby of a bank account himself. He took to Twitter to call out Bezos and a storm of publicity soon followed. Now, here's the kicker. I agree with Bernie Sanders. It's been on my Christmas list every year, but one thing I guess I will never get is entitlement reform. I want entitlements cut back drastically. Sanders, on the other hand, does not. But his point was that Jeff Bezos is not paying his employees enough so that they no longer qualify for government handouts. So what do the employees do? They go and they get their government handouts. It's almost as if people respond to incentives. Now, if I could have it entirely my way, I'd say cut the handouts, but that won't happen anytime soon because the culture has become so dependent on them that any party that made a move like that wouldn't hold office again for a generation. So this is what happens when you subsidize and guarantee income. This is what happens when you involve the government in the economy. If the government wasn't guaranteeing income and benefits to workers, and Bezos wasn't paying them enough, guess whose employees would go on strike or quit? Jeff Bezos's. But since the system is set up to supposedly benefit the poor, disenfranchised worker, Bezos is able to forward his own cost of labor directly onto the taxpayer because of government subsidized program. This is the same reason that college tuition has skyrocketed, not to get off topic, but when colleges know that the government will guarantee student loans, they have no incentive to lower tuition costs to be competitive. Why would they? Colleges are a business. Anyway, it wasn't just Bernie Sanders comp campaigning against Bezos for this, excuse me. There should actually be a pretty nonpartisan realization of this problem. Take a look at my guy Tucker breaking it down. Jeff Bezos isn't paying his workers enough to eat, so you made up the difference with your tax dollars. Next time you see Jeff Bezos, make certain to s that he says thank you. One thing I've always said is that I respect Bernie Sanders. I do respect Bernie Sanders. I think he's honest and I think he's truly driven by doing what he thinks is the right thing. That being said, I disagree with him on probably 99% of every conceivable issue. He was in the right mindset bringing this issue forward, but of course his prescription for the problem was misguided. So. What was his solution? Well, he authored a bill that would force companies to pay taxes on the amount of government benefits that their employees consume. So, this way the cost would be covered presumably by the company instead of the taxpayers. There are problems with this because it could incentivize employers to stop hiring people that qualify for government benefits, and it could potentially increase the transition within the company to automation, which would not be good for these types of workers. But nonetheless, this bill isn't going to make any progress, and we'll talk about why in just a second. Instead, Bezos just said, he was, geez, Bernie, you know what? You win. I'll raise the wages of my employees. Was this enough to make Bernie a happy little socialist? Yep, and so were all the leftists in the media. Bernie Sanders, the titan that he is, taking on the evil corporations for the sake of the poor American worker. I mean, it sounds like a great story, right? Well, here's the part that isn't so fun, and I'm sorry to break this to you, but Bezos doesn't give a damn about how much his employees are making. He really does not. What Bezos cares about is growing his company and maintaining his monopolistic status. So how does he do that? He raises his minimum wage to $15 an hour and now says that Amazon will also be spending money to lobby for a federal increase in the minimum wage. Guess why? Because Amazon can afford it. You know who can afford it? His competition, the smaller guys. This is why a monopoly cannot exist in a free market. The only thing that will create a monopoly is government intervention. Same thing with Walmart. They've been known to lobby for raising the minimum wage too, but they actually can't afford $15 an hour. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And Taxpayers subsidize Walmart employees quite a bit too. Their business model of high volume, low margins leaves them with a profit margin of just about 3%. So does it really surprise you that Bezos would raise his wages to $15 an hour and then lobby for everyone else to be forced to do the same? Especially Walmart, which coincidentally is his largest competition. 
Bezos raising his wages was a business move, not a morality move. So here's what happens now. Bezos looks like the good guy, even though he's essentially just playing financial hot potato, hoping he can eventually cause the federal minimum wage to increase to $15 per hour to destroy his competition. Until then, companies are still going to have you, the taxpayer, assist with their cost of labor via entitlements. If the system was set up differently to begin with, these large companies wouldn't have budgeted so that they could no longer afford to pay their employees a wage that would cause them to be eligible for government subsidized benefits. But they knew, of course, that the Democrat built entitlement system would always be there for them to utilize. So of course they took advantage of it, further cementing and normalizing the use of government benefits into American culture. This is not justice for the little guy, for Joe Sixpack, for anybody. What this is, pure and simple, is powerful companies using government regulation to further their agenda. Now, John, wait a second. You sound suspiciously anti-corporation right now. I thought you liked the free market. Do I sound that way? Because this market is not free. Do not be fooled. This is not a free market. Bezos, of course, does this right after Bernie calls him out on it. So now who wins? Bernie wins because he's perceived as a hero who single-handedly took on the world's richest man. Bezos wins because he can point at the competition and say, I stop being a greedy capitalist pig. Why can't you do the same? And I love it when the left talks about, you know, evil corporations taking advantage of the average worker. And how do they do it? I mean, well, by not paying them enough. No, believe it or not, the mutually agreed exchange of one's labor for a wage is not it. How they do it is by fording the cost of their labor onto you, the taxpayer, through government regulations. Why does this continue? Because of leftist politicians. Who advocates for more entitlements? Who takes in millions of dollars from these corporations to ensure that they can keep getting away with this? Who then decides the solutions and increase in the minimum wage that will eliminate competition in the market? Who kills jobs with these regulations, causing the number of people eligible for government subsidized benefits to increase? Democrats. Oh, conservatives are the one that allow big corporations to take advantage of us. Shut up. Just honestly shut up. That is the biggest economic lie I can think of. It's always repeated by people that would be forced to change their minds if they took a high school level economic class. I remember I met this girl at, wait for it, politics camp. And uh, she was telling me, she was like, yeah, I'm a Democrat, but I'm pretty moderate on some issues. Like I don't support the minimum wage increasing because I took econ and I know that that causes more unemployment. Okay, <laughs> do you want a cookie? Like, I'm not going to pat you on the back for being more educated on something than most everyone else in your party. But anyways, Sanders' proposed solution to this problem will never pass in Congress because regardless of what Democrats say, their allegiance is not to the working class. Their allegiance is to Jeff Bezos, to the Walton family, to Travis Kalanick and other Silicon Valley billionaires. Just ask yourself this question. Why would a company donate to a party that is openly calling for more regulation? You have been seduced by the idea that it is to help out the working class when in actuality it is the exact opposite. It is because businesses at their core have an instinct to grow and crush any competition that stands in their way. Why focus on providing better goods or services at a more reasonable price? You can just pay someone else to crush the competition for you while hiding behind the public perception that you're virtuous for doing so. So, the next time you see Jeff Bezos or one of the Waltons, be sure they buy you a cup of coffee to pay you back for the donations that you've been giving to their employees directly from your paycheck. Since, I guess forced charity is virtuous, you may as well feel really good about your generosity since it doesn't look like you're going to be able to stop being so generous anytime soon. Hey guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. There's now a convenient little photo of me down there. If you click on that, it'll help you subscribe. It's from my intro when I was smoking a cigarette. Do as I say, not as I do. Smoking kills. Give this video a thumbs up, help my channel grow, and also, share this video with a liberal friend of yours. See if you can ruin their day just by sending them a video that says Bernie Sanders isn't indeed a demigod. Thank you so much for watching as always, and may God bless America.